and IUL can pay out double, triple, even quadruple what IRAs and 401ks do, especially when invested in the market. I'm talking about IRAs and 401ks. In this episode, I'm going to address the question, how an IUL death benefit can be used for tax-free retirement income. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a retirement planning specialist now for just about five decades, 48 and a half years to be precise, helping thousands of people uh, optimize their assets, minimize taxes, and empower what I call their authentic wealth. And in doing so, uh, helping people prepare for a comfortable retirement, I like to eliminate the dangers of taxes, inflation, and market volatility, which are the three big dangers that cause most retirees to outlive their money. Well, sometimes there's other uh, unexpected events that happen. So my favorite financial instrument or vehicle to accumulate money tax-free, allow you to take tax-free income that will last as long as you do, and be uh, immune from market volatility and inflation is a max-funded indexed universal life policy structured correctly and funded properly if it meets the LASER test. Now, LASER is an acronym that stands for liquidity, safety, rate of return, and tax benefits in that order. And so uh, in my most recent best-selling book, we have four different measurements for liquidity, safety, rate of return, and tax benefits. Where most people uh, save their money, uh, it, it fails that laser test. On a scale of one to 10 on liquidity, most people's investments uh, only score three or four at best, like an IRA or 401k. If you touch it before age 59 and a half, there's a 10% penalty and it triggers tax. No, that, that, that doesn't pass the liquidity test. Safety, if you have your money in mutual funds or in the market, you can lose 40%, which many people have experienced many times uh, in the last 20 years as of the recording of this episode. It doesn't pass the safety of test. Rate of return. Do you know that most people who have their money in the market are only averaging about three and a half percent, according to studies, Dalbar? Uh, and yet the, the, the advisors say, oh no, hang in there, uh, you'll earn 12. Well, people aren't earning 12. Even if you bought and held, they only earn maybe nine, but they, they don't buy and hold. When the market starts to go down, they get nervous and they finally sell low. And then they wait, 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 and buy high. So the average return of people who have their money in the market is only three and a half percent. That's pretty pathetic. My average return on IUL has been 9.6% tax-free, okay? So it's my favorite vehicle to be able to do this. Now, <clears throat> when you watch other episodes, you'll understand that what you're doing is you're using a life insurance policy, indexed universal life, primarily for living benefits. Meaning uh, the death benefit is secondary. You're trying to take the least amount of insurance that the IRS will let you get away with, so to speak. And you're trying to put in the most premium the IRS allows as fast as they allow under three tax laws or citations called TEFRA, DEFRA, and TAMRA. You can search my channel to learn more about those. So this allows you to accumulate money tax-free under Section 72E of the Internal Revenue Code, which has been around in one form or another for 108 years. You can access your money. I don't care if you retire at age 35, 45, you don't have to wait till you're 59 and a half. And you can turn on tax-free income from age 60, let's say, if you live to be 120, tax-free income that will last as long as you do. And then when you ultimately die, uh, whatever's left behind blossoms, increases in value and transfers tax-free. I'm gonna be 70 here in a couple of months. If I died in an accident tomorrow, every million that I might have in a portfolio of laser funds would blossom to about two and a half million and transfer tax-free to my wife, my kids, my grandkids, a church, a charity, whoever, uh, within three weeks after I die. There's not a, an IRA 401k or a Roth that will do that. And people always say, hmm, how much does that cost? <laughs> well, nothing's free. It doesn't cost me anything, though. It's being paid for with a minuscule portion of interest that would otherwise go out the window in unnecessary tax. I only have to earn 11% to net 10. 
most people have to earn 15% in an IRA or 401k to net 10 after tax. You subtract the fees, they have to earn 15 to net nine. Uh, oh my heavens, I, I can earn uh, 11 and net 10, and that is one percentage point that is not taxes, that's the cost of the insurance that actually makes my account double or triple when I die, okay? So it, it's money that would otherwise go out the window in unnecessary tax. The point is this, if uh, you happen to die sooner than later, I've had many clients, my own brother included, that I set up IUL policies for living benefits so that he could take tax-free income and he was killed in a one-car rollover clear back in 1999. Now, I was able to take the death benefit of several hundred thousand dollars and turn that into uh, tax-free income for my sister-in-law, his sweet wife, and their four children that help them continue with their college education, living life in dignity for the next 20 years because of the death benefit. So whenever I have a client where they experience death, that money is tax-free. Life insurance proceeds upon death are tax-free. They come to me and I say, if I were you, I'm talking a lot of times to widows or widowers, uh, I would recommend you keep it tax-free. And they go, how? Uh, because I would put it right back into a max-funded indexed universal life insurance policy on you or on your kids or grandkids, but you own it. And so I've had many people that got a million-dollar death benefit, and they were able to take that million dollars and put it back into an insurance policy, and that million dollars generates Eighty to a hundred thousand a year of tax-free income the rest of their life without depleting the million. Unfortunately, a lot of people come out of the woodwork and say, "Oh, take half of that million and pay off your five hundred thousand dollar mortgage." Why? Because not only did you uh, just sort of kill one of your tax deductions, but you wouldn't believe how many widows two or three years later say, "Oh, well, I want to go borrow on the house," and they don't have any credit history. If they would have just kept the mortgage going by taking some of the interest on that million in an IUL policy, making the mortgage payment, they establish credit without having to reprove their credit worthy by qualifying for a new loan. There's all kinds of reasons why you want to preserve that money tax free. So that's why any proceeds from life insurance ought to be uh, totally preserved tax free to generate tax free income or just grow tax free. So far, so good. So let me just say this, there's five parties to a life insurance policy or contract, okay? There's the insured, that's the one that has the insurance on them. There's the owner of the insurance policy, which is usually the insured, but doesn't have to be. What? Yeah, see, I own IUL policies on my wife, on my kids. My kids own them on me. I've owned them on my mother-in-law, father-in-law, my dad. I couldn't own it on my mother because she was uninsurable. I own policies on them. Why? Do the math. My kids own them on me if I have insurance capacity. Why? Because they can take out a million dollar life insurance policy on me. Look at what it does, not what it is. They can put in 600 bucks a month, a thousand a month. And anytime I die, because I'm not immortal, they will get a million bucks tax-free when I die. That will generate 100,000 a year of tax-free income. You show me any IRA or 401k that they could put in 800 or $1,000 a month and end up with a million bucks. It would take 30, 35 years to grow to that net after tax. If I die anytime, they get a million bucks tax-free. This is far superior to my kids putting that money in an IRA or 401k. They own life insurance on me. On me. The owner gets all the tax-free benefits. That's why banks and credit unions own BOLI, bank-owned life insurance. They own insurance policies on their stockholders, on their board members, because the owner gets all the tax-free benefits, okay? So we have the insured, we have the owner, we have the premium payor. That's the person who's putting the money in. That's usually the owner, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a family trust, whatever, okay? You have the beneficiary, that's the one who gets the tax-free proceeds if you die, okay? You have to suffer an economic loss to be named a beneficiary. You have to have a reason and justification 
to be a beneficiary at the time the policy is issued, but you can change the beneficiary after it's issued to a church or a charity if you want. You can donate your life to be insured to a church or charity, the Red Cross, the Boy Scouts, okay? Now, the last party is the insurance company, the insurer. So when you really think about what I just said, you can own policies on other people. I own them on my spouse, my kids, my kids own them on me. I own them on my in-laws, my mom, my dad, because of what it does. It's the owner of the contract. And so I've had many clients. I just had a client here a few weeks ago at the grandson. He was named as the beneficiary of his grandmother's policy. He took that lump sum of several hundred thousand dollars and immediately wanted to know what to do with it. And I said, put it back into a policy on you, which he did. And that is going to grow tax-free and create tax-free income far better than an IRA or 401k. That's what I'm talking about. You can use this for tax-free retirement income. And every million dollars that you have can generate 80, 90, 100,000 a year of tax-free income for as long as you live. That is why I own them on other people and my family members own them on me. Look at what it does, not what it is. Sometimes people do not understand, wow, wait a minute. This grows tax-free. I can turn on tax-free income. And when the person dies, it blossoms and transfers. Yeah, check it out. Nothing else in the, in the Internal Revenue Code does that uh, that I'm aware of. So this is why I wrote the book, The Laser Fund, my 11th book, how to diversify and create the foundation for a tax-free retirement. If you want to learn how to do this correctly and uh, even use this for death benefit, I want to gift you a copy of this book. It retails for 20 bucks. I'm not trying to sell you a book. I'll gift it to you. To claim your free copy, go to thelaserfund.com, just, just laserfund, L-A-S-E-R fund.com, or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost. I will pay for the book. I'll fire out a hard copy to you. And then there's options there. If you would rather listen and learn or watch and learn, there's even an 18-hour masterclass. Uh, there's also webinars. I can also point you to an advisor that will help you implement one of these correctly. But this is about you and your brighter future. This has all kinds of charts and graphs and explanations. You flip it over and there's 62 actual client stories of how to use the laser fund for all kinds of goals, not just retirement. This knocks the socks off of IRAs and 401ks, but 529 college plans, your business, your real estate management. You can use it like a financial Swiss army knife. It has several different functions. It's the dream solution. And I want you to learn why and how for your brighter future.